Lift and Strength Finder test worth it? I'm about to tell you. In three, two. Hello, hello. Welcome to my video. Hello. 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 My name is Autumn Rain, and today we're reviewing Strength Finder 2.0 by Don Clifton. Is it worth it? No. No, it's, it's not. I mean, I wouldn't pay $20 for it. The only reason I even took the test is because my university paid for it. But I'll tell you what, when they gave me my results, it wasn't anything I didn't already know. They're like, you're positive. I'm like, no sh sure. A lot of people describe me as a ball of sunshine all the time. Now, if you want to know your strengths, go and ask your friends. Go ask your family because I'm sure they can tell you. And there are a ton of free strength finding quizzes online for free and i link those down in the description now i know that you might be a little disappointed and you're like but i still want to know all the strengths that there are and that's why i'm going to tell you every single one starting now the 34 strengths i'm about to go over are divided into four categories execution influence relations and strategy Let's go over execution first. The nine strengths in this category are all about getting her done with speed, precision, and accuracy. People with the following strengths put ideas into action. Do you have a constant need for achievement? Hello, Achiever. This strength allows for an unbelievable drive. Call it divine restlessness. But be warned, this means that like Angelica Skylark, you will never be satisfied. And you must learn to conquer the perpetual whispers of discontent. Take extra effort to lead a balanced life and choose a self-driven job that allows you to work as hard as you want on clear goals. When you find a challenging job that makes you feel alive, you'll not only lead a successful life, but a happy one. Hmm. But maybe you're not so much the achiever as you are the arranger. Nickname, Puzzle Master. If when faced with complex situations involving many factors, you enjoy managing all the variables and aligning and realigning them until you've arranged the best and most productive configuration possible, then you must be an arranger. You can see how it all fits together. Obviously, you'll want to do something in your life that plays to this strength. Think wedding or vacation planner, or anything with a lot of variables to manage. Or maybe your strength is belief. Someone with belief operates from a set of strong core values. For the believer, following these core values gives life meaning and satisfaction, more so than money and prestige ever could. Do you have the strength of belief? If so, people probably call you dependable because you're easy to trust and you probably believe that if you can't live out your values, you're not living. You're the kind of person to say, if you're not doing something important, then why bother? Therefore, you should do something you find very important and that positively contributes to the world. Do you always root for the underdog? Or do you get angry when somebody abuses their power? Then maybe your strength is consistency. If so, then you believe that everyone should operate on an even playing field. You dislike selfishness and individualism, and you hate unfair advantages. That's because you believe the best world is one with consistency, where rules are clear and applied to everyone equally. You uphold what is fair. This means you would be great in managerial, community-oriented, and rule-enforcing positions. If you're always careful, always vigilant, and know that the world can be an unpredictable place, there's a good chance you have the strength of deliberation. You're a rigorous thinker and great at identifying, assessing, and reducing risk. Though you might be a reserved, quiet, and fairly serious person, you're able to navigate any minefield because you naturally have good judgment. Whether you're doing legal work, crafting business deals, or ensuring compliance, you see anything that can go wrong and therefore are able to avoid it. Are you guilty of constant self-imposed routines, timelines, and plans? Do you see the inherent messiness of life and need control? If so, there's a good chance you have the strength of discipline. This means you are always productive. Precision is a core part of who you are, and increasing efficiency is one of your hallmarks. A perfectionist at heart, you are well suited to many jobs, hobbies, etc. Just make sure that you're in an environment where your ordered, systematic, and perfectionist tendencies benefit both you and those around you. Where am I headed? Do you ask yourself this question every single day? Really? Congratulations, you have the strength of focus. You need a clear destination, and that's why every year, month, week, and maybe even every day, you set goals. These goals guide your life. You might be guilty of saying something like, if it doesn't move me closer to my goal, then it's not important. 
nickname eye of the tiger because you have excellent prioritization skills and are near surgical with how you do everything you can operate in any role where you function independently on a few well-defined initiatives this is actually kind of like the achiever strength except with the goal you will feel calm while the achiever will still feel restless additionally you'll have even more focus so make sure not to mix those up do you feel emotionally obligated every time you say yes to something, which is often, as if dropping the ball even once would solely your good name? If so, I'm this responsible. If your strength is responsibility, then you have no choice but to take psychological ownership of anything to which you commit. If you do mess up, an apology is not enough. I mean, how could you live with yourself until you make it up to the person who you let down? You're more than dependable. You're like a mom. Your level of conscientiousness, exemplary ethics, and near obsession with doing things the right way is both a strength and a curse. Could you work at a corrupt company? Not on your life. There's no such thing as business ethics versus personal ethics. There are only ethics, and you live by them. Any job that lets you follow through on your commitments is a good job for you. Word to the wise, if your strength is responsibility, learn how to say no. You don't have to help everybody. If you love to solve problems, enjoy the challenge of analyzing symptoms to figure out what's wrong and fix it, you might have the strength of restoration. Your restorative power means you love restoring things back to their true glory. When you can breathe life back into whatever it is you're trying to fix, you feel spiritually rewarded and at peace. There's no better joy than getting something to work again. Pursue roles where you're paid to solve problems and where your success depends on your ability to restore slash resolve. P.S. You might really like medicine, consulting, programming, or customer service. These next eight strengths influence to success, taking charge and making themselves known. The strengths are great for communicating with an audience at large or working toward a huge goal. When can I start? When can I start? When can I start? Sound like the type of question you might ask three times in a row? You're probably an activator. Analysis is great and all, but the really important thing is action. Once you decide something, you can't not act. Some might say, but there's still so much you don't know. Doesn't matter to you. You already started. You're not afraid to fail, and your tenacity is inspiring. No one else can transform innovative ideas into immediate action like you. Your process isn't pretty, but your outcomes are undeniable. Make sure you take on projects that play to this, and become friends with someone who's focused, futuristic, strategic, or analytical so that they can help you too. Do you sometimes intimidate others just by how frank you are? Are you not only able, but willing to take charge whenever necessary? If so, nice to meet you, Commander. The command strength lets you serve up cold truth and challenge others without fear. If something needs to be said or done, you lead yourself and others towards what needs to happen. You're naturally decisive and persuasive, and you don't take BS. Consider a job that lets you be candid and take charge in times of crisis. You're great at jobs that most everybody hates, like selling, delivering bad news, and getting people to fall in line. Just get a friend gifted with woo and empathy to balance you out, and you good to go. If you like to explain, describe, speak, and write, then you probably have the strength of communication. You're great at storytelling, and you often hunt for the perfect way to say something. People like to listen to you. That's why you'll do well in teaching, sales, marketing, media, motivation, or wherever your presenting skills can wow your audience. This is a wonderful gift, so make sure to use it. This one's pretty simple. If you're competitive, then you probably have the theme of competition. You compete to win and take losing hard. You'll want to be in environments where you can measure your accomplishments against others and win often. The competition will spur you to even greater heights. By competing with someone slightly above your level of expertise, you can continually grow. And as long as you can turn something into a competition, you will always be able to self-motivate. Why settle for great when you can have perfect? If you think like this, chances are you're a maximizer. Nickname, perfect touch. You might think being well-rounded is overrated because honing specific gifts in yourself and others calls to you more than anything. Here's a passage from the book that really explains it. There's nothing I hate more than having to fix a poorly written piece. I almost can't bring myself to write comments on it. I'm more inclined to just hand it back and say, just please start again. On the other hand, what I love to do is take a piece that is so close and then refine it to make it perfect. In other words, you don't fix what is broken, you make perfect what is already great. And that's why you'll be good in coaching, managing, mentoring, editing, designing, and other roles where your one-minded focus on elevating something to excellence is appreciated. Are you super self-confident? Then you might have the strength of self-assurance. Self-assurance is even better than self-confidence because you not only have faith in your abilities, but also in your judgment. Here are a few sentences from the book that describe it perfectly. I never second guess myself. Whether I'm buying a present or a house, when I make my decision, 
It feels to me as if I had no choice. There was only one decision to make, and I made it. It's easy for me to sleep at night. Because you do your best and you have to make a lot of decisions, you'll do really great at a startup or in a leadership position. Partner with someone who has strong deliberative, strategic, or futuristic talents. Because once you set your side on a goal, you'll achieve it no matter how long it takes. And you want to know if it's a goal worth achieving. Do you want, no need, to be very significant in the eyes of other people? Then no doubt about it, you have the strength of significance. Just know that this strength is the nastiest double-edged sword you've ever seen. Unless you have the self-assured talent, you will probably be afraid of failure and part of your self-esteem will always be in the hands of others. However, because you want to be known and to stand out, you're likely to be very successful. Your life will be centered around the goals, achievements, and qualifications that you crave. You know that you're meant to do great things, and that alone will take you very far. You'll do best when your work is visible, crucial, puts you on center stage, and gives you free reign over how you do things. Woo woo woo! That's right, we're on to woo. If you can easily win over others and enjoy the challenge of doing so, well there you go. Strangers don't intimidate you, you're rarely at a loss for words, and you're always able to break the ice and make a connection. To you, there are no strangers, only friends you haven't met yet. Read how to win friends and gain influence, or keep watching my channel until I review it, because that book is your guide to life. Go into a field where you can interact with many people in a single day. You're a natural networker, so use your networking abilities to bring important people together who can help you and each other. And if you work with someone who's a relator or empathic, they'll help you solidify the relationships that you begin. Now these next nine strengths bring people together. They bring out the best in everybody, including themselves. What's going to work? Teamwork, led by people with relationship building strengths. Speaking of building relationships, if you haven't already, please give this video a quick like. It would help me out so much. So, 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 so much. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm sure you're doing it, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Are you able to adapt to any situation? Do sudden, unforeseen requests not phase you at all? Then it should be no surprise that you have the strength of adaptability. You live in the moment, and you thrive in any environment where flexibility is required. I see an exciting career in your future. Make sure to make good friends with someone who is great at planning. Do you believe that we're all connected and that everything happens for a reason? Then you probably have the theme of connectedness. It's highly likely you believe we are all a part of something larger, perhaps a collective unconsciousness. You try to tell people that if we harm and exploit others, we actually harm and exploit ourselves. This is because you understand the unity of humankind, the importance of humility, and how to connect with almost anyone, regardless of their background. Here's a passage from the book that really explains it. Sometimes I look at my bowl of cereal in the morning and I think about those hundreds of people who were involved in bringing me my bowl of cereal. The farmers in the field, the biochemist who made the pesticides, the warehouse workers of the food preparation plant, even the marketers who somehow persuaded me to buy this box of cereal and not a different one sitting next to it on the shelf. I know it sounds strange, but I give thanks to these people, and just doing that makes me feel more involved with life, more connected to things, less alone. If this sounds like you, find a place where you can listen and counsel others, and know that you will thrive in environments where connection is emphasized. If you are somebody who only sees potential, then you're probably a developer. Everything and everyone is a work in progress, positively teeming with possibilities. Oh, and you know that point in a movie where someone discovers themselves and realizes that they're totally stronger than they think? Oh, you love that. You're excellent at recognizing growth and each tiny bit of growth brings you satisfaction. Your positive encouragement spurs others to new heights because they know it's genuine because you are genuinely fulfilled by helping others learn and grow. Go into teaching, coaching, or managing because you truly have a gift that you need to utilize. Can you sense the emotions of those around you? If so, then is it any surprise that you have the strength of empathy? You don't feel pity for other people because that's sympathy. No, you understand people because you are empathic. You can anticipate needs, answer unasked questions, and help someone express their feelings before they even know what their feelings are. Your emotional IQ is 1000. Enter any field where caring is a must and where the ability to identify and navigate emotions is prized. Usually opposites attract when it comes to befriending someone with complementary strengths. However, in this case, you're going to want to befriend someone who's just as empathic as you are, as well as someone with the strength of command or activation. Are you always figuring out how everyone can just get along? Well, if your strength is harmony, of course you are. Sometimes you're baffled by just how much people try to force their views on others. Not you. You're great at finding common ground. As a matter of fact, Jubilee needs to take tips from you. 
nickname Peacemaker, because you can resolve conflict without confrontation, naturally bring people together, and are next to none when it comes to networking, you need to enter a space where those talents come in handy. P.S. When you do have to challenge someone head on, find someone with the command talent that can help you out. Are you physically uncomfortable when you see someone sitting alone at lunch or being excluded from a conversation? Oh my gosh, you are so nice. But I would expect nothing less from an includer. You hate when others are on the outside looking in and you can't help but befriend them if only to draw them into the warmth of your group. You are such an accepting, non-judgmental, inviting person who goes out of your way to make sure that no one is ignored because everyone is important and deserves to be treated that way. If you're an includer, you need to get into a place where you can bring out the voices that are not usually heard. Doing this will put you on the fast track to life satisfaction. Are you obsessed with the uniqueness residing within every person you meet? Then perhaps you have the strength of individualization. You love the differences between individuals and this leads you to knowing a person's preferences, motivation, style, thought patterns, relationships, stories, and more. You are a keen observer of other people and can identify their strengths better than Don Clifton and his strengths finder. Being able to figure out who people are at their core, what they want, and what they can do is no small gift. Surround yourself with people you can help with that gift. Are you a glass half full kind of person? Maybe the glass is even more than half full if you look at it from the right angle. If you think this way, then three snaps for you because your strength is positivity. You're quick to praise, smile, and point out positives. You make the world brighter because of your enthusiasm, optimism, and energy. Some part of you, or maybe all of you, truly believes that it is good to be alive. You'll do well in roles where highlighting positives is encouraged. For example, sales, teaching, medicine, and many other areas. You might get your greatest joy from encouraging others, so don't hold back and stay away from negative people that bring you down. You do your best when you're smiling, which is often. This next one is cool. If you're a relator, that means you derive great joy from being around your close friends. It's not that you don't like new people, it's just that the more close you are with your friends, the more you value that relationship. And a relationship only has value if it's genuine. So acquaintances won't mean that much to you, but your friends will mean everything. When it comes to working, make sure that it's in an extremely friendly environment. Company culture and work style will be very important to you because you will not do well in a formal organization. And if the organization is competitive and cutthroat, that's even worse. Also, no matter how busy you are, stay in contact with your friends because they give you life. These last eight strengths are pretty self-explanatory. When a problem needs to be solved, you'll want to get someone with one of these. If you're the kind of person who demands that everyone prove their claims, that's your analytical strength shining through. You're an objective, logical sort, able to see patterns and connections where others can't. Your mind is always churning, gifting you with insightful analysis about anything and everything. Data is your friend and can show you the truth that others don't see. Think about a position that hinges on research, perhaps in marketing, finance, data, editing, medicine, or anything else that needs your keen, shrewd eyes. Heads up, make sure to get out of your head sometimes and perhaps make friends with an activator. Do you look to the past to understand the present? If so, then wowza, because you have the strength of context. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Whoever said this probably had the strength of context too. You're very good at predicting what will happen next because you can easily see what will happen from what has happened. Nickname, Psychic. Sometimes it takes you a moment to orient yourself, but allow yourself that time because the past is how you understand the world and the people in it. Look for jobs that require your kind of analysis and partner with somebody who's futuristic to balance you out. What are the characteristics of someone who is futuristic? Oh my goodness, I'm so happy you asked. If you're futuristic, then you're able to constantly conjure up visions of the future and those visions energize you. A true visionary, you're constantly dealing in what ifs. What you imagine is so detailed that when you're able to suitably describe it, it feels real to others too. Master your communication and activator skills or partner with someone who has those strengths. And also make friends with another futuristic thinker so you can stoke the flames of your creative visions even more. You're a natural entrepreneur or an entrepreneur if that suits your fancy. This means that the best place for you would be in an organization that allows you to be creative and pursue change within the organization. Consider a startup. If ideas are your bread and butter, one of your strengths is ideation. You love connecting things together through ideas. And when you find a beautifully simple concept to explain a complex one, you're over the moon. You love examining things from a different angle and creating novel, elucidating new ways to look at it. 
There's no better joy than ideas that make everything make sense. Know that you get bored quickly and that you need to be in an environment where you can constantly experiment. Go into work where constant new ideas are gold, such as marketing, journalism, or design. Partner with an analytical strength type to help you weed through your ideas. If you think that Jeopardy and Trivial Pursuit were made for you, there's a good chance you have the strength of input. You're super inquisitive because you find everything interesting and you love collecting things and information. Look into jobs where you're required to learn new things all the time. Computer science, journalism, research, or any field really. Listen to this next part very carefully. Specialize. When you specialize, the information you collect will not only delight you, but benefit you. Make friends with somebody who is great at focus or discipline to balance out your naturally scattered, albeit fun approach to life. Do you like to think? If you actually enjoy exercising your brain, the new probs have the gift of intellection. You're the kind of person who can sit alone in a room and be perfectly fine thinking and reflecting in a quiet corner. You're introspective and your own best friend. There is a perpetual mental hum because you can't turn off your brain, but you wouldn't even if you could. Consider philosophy, literature, or psychology, or anything where thinking long and hard is encouraged. Don't be afraid to take your alone time and retreat into your head. If it makes you happy, good on ya. If you love to learn, can you guess who you are? The learner! The process of learning is exciting because going from ignorance to competence is exhilarating. Or you know, at least for you. Even though you can become a master, being the jack of all trades sounds pretty fun too. Some people will be frustrated in a working environment where they're expected to learn a lot about a subject in a short amount of time and then immediately move on to another project where they have to do the same thing. Not you, because learning is your strength. Like someone with the strength of input, you'll want to be in a field that is constantly shifting. However, you'll also want a field that requires some level of technical competence. Of course, you'll have a lot to learn, but that's a bonus. Can you sort through clutter to find the best way? If you're able to see patterns where other people only see complexity, then you have the strength of strategy. Nickname, Stratatac. It's like you can see where every action leads. You instinctively evaluate potential obstacles, cull down your potential moves, and choose the perfect one for you, your strategy. Because you're able to predict, plan, and react so well, go into work where strategy is desperately needed. You're able to transform an ordinary pipe dream into a reality. You can lead entire initiatives and enterprises without suffering from tunnel vision. That's it, we did it. We went over all 34 strengths. But I have a confession to make. The 34 strengths we just covered aren't actually strengths so much as potential strengths, or in other words, talent. And you need investment in order to turn a talent into a strength. The great thing is that when you do this, your talent actually serves as a multiplier for your investment. So if you absolutely suck at something, let's say you're a one, and you really put forth the investment, let's say a 10, you get a strength of 10. Let's say you're average with a talent of a five. Whoa, then you have a strength at 50. Now, let's say you have ample talent as well as ample investment. Oh my goodness, that's a strength of 100. 10 times what you'd have if you inherently sucked at something. A lot of self-help stuff tries to make you become what you aren't. Obviously, there's a better way. You should become more of who you are. Focusing on your strengths is a good thing. People who do so are six times as likely to be engaged in their jobs and more than three times as likely to report having an excellent quality of life. And before I go back to the video, I will end on a story from the book. Mark Twain once described a man who had died and met St. Peter at the pearly gates. Knowing that St. Peter was very wise, the man asked a question that he had wondered about throughout his life. He said, St. Peter, I have been interested in military history for many years. Who was the greatest general of all time? St. Peter quickly responded, Oh, that's simple. It's the man right over there. You must be mistaken, responded the man, now very perplexed. I knew that man on earth. He was just a common laborer. That's right, my friend, assured St. Peter. He would have been the greatest general of all time, if he had been a general. I'll let that story sit with you and we can go back to the video. Congratulations! We just went through all 34 strengths. And that means you just saved yourself $20. Yes! Okay, just in case you're wondering, I'm going to go over my five strengths right now. And they are achiever, ideation, positivity, futuristic, and strategic. Now, as you can see, those are very generic. I did not need to take a test to know that about myself. 
I already knew those things. And if you ask my friends and family, they already knew those things. If you've been watching my videos for the last couple months, you probably could have guessed that. These are super generic. Yes, they're true. Yes, it is accurate. However, like I said, there are better tests out there. I would personally go with the Myers-Briggs test before I go with this one, right? Especially since this one, you have to pay for it. It's just a no. It's just a no for me. I also took the BP10 test. That's a test that they offer on there. I got profitability, selling, risk, disruptor, and uh, my role is like an expert. If you don't know what I just said, ignore it. But like I said, I could have guessed these things too. In my opinion, it just isn't worth it. And if I don't think it's worth $20 to find out your top five strengths, then I definitely don't think it's worth it to pay 40, not even $40, oh my gosh, $50 to learn all your 34 strengths but ranked in order, right? I, you just, you don't need to do that. It's an extraneous expense. However, if you wanna do it, don't feel bad. Treat yourself, it's fine. But I personally don't recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you've watched one of my previous videos where I go over the secret to happiness and the meaning of life, and I break down the happiness formula step by step, you know just how important I think it is to find your strengths because a good life is one where you play to your strengths and realize your full potential. I just don't think that you have to pay to find those out. Just ask your friends and family. That's honestly the best way. And if that's not the answer for you, then take a free quiz. And if you're like, no, Autumn, I am really set on taking this Clifton Strengths quiz thing. I mean, I want to know all the 34 strengths in detail. Well, guess what? You still don't have to pay. Just go to my blog where I have all 34 strengths listed out with descriptions underneath everything, and you can figure out your strengths for yourself without paying a dime. Okay, and as always, if you like this content, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye. In three, two, <laughs> Hello, my name is Autumn Rain, and today we're reviewing Strengths Finder 2.0 by Don Clifton. <laughs> I'll try it one more time. And you just saved yourself $20. Yes! What a strange yes. Bye! P.S. If you're wondering what the actionable step is for this video, it's to not buy the quiz. Okay, bye!